Hello. I'm going to talk a little bit about a talk I heard. And uh, it was a, a meeting I joined on an invitation for, from a friend. And it was a, a beginner's, super beginner's class in meditation. The, the speaker was uh, my age. So he's been in the game a long, long time. He's far, but he gave a great talk. And uh, his, he said one thing that I thought was very, very uh, true, something that we can all learn from when we enter the path. And he said that when you begin meditation, you want to make sure that it, your meditation just doesn't become part of the problem. And it happens so often that meditation does become part of the problem. And because it does, a lot of times people get discouraged and quit. And the reason that happens is because there's not enough, uh, you know, not correct motivation from the beginning. By correct, I mean, that it, not that people have a, a bad attitude or anything. They try, they're trying to meditate for all the wrong reasons or something. But they just don't understand what they're, they're approaching, what they're, what they're giving themselves to. So often meditation does just become another problem. And that's the reason why meditation practices typically don't endure very long, maybe a few weeks or a month or very sporadically now and then, which never works. So when he said that, don't make meditation part of the problem, it really struck me because it was just so concise and so true. And it's seldom, it's not, it's seldom brought up, you know, because people usually promote meditation, you know, and say it's a cure-all for everything. And his caution was a really a good one. And so I'm gonna talk a little bit about just that, what he's talking, what he said. So why does meditation become part of the problem? Well, the short answer is because it's embedded in our consciousness that we, whatever we do, we, you know, it yields something, we get some reward from it. Like we go to school and we, you know, go from grade to grade, get, you know, eventually graduated, go somewhere. And even within the classes, you know, we might get acknowledged with special certificates and this and that for our achievements. Same with sports and even simple things like going to shop for groceries. We bring something home. We have something in return for what we, our actions. And so we're, it's, we're, we live in a what's in it for me world, basically. And people begin meditation with that same attitude. And that's where the problem is. Because you see, basically, you know, everything it's within us already. So when we meditate, we're not trying to, to get anything you know, or achieve anything. Because if we do that, we're like trying to add a head on top of our head. Because we are, we already basically have what we, we, all we can possibly have. But we are not aware of it. So meditation is a little bit different than other things. Because other things, you know, we don't have food on a table, we go buy it, we put food on the table. Meditation is different because it's there already and we're not seeing it. It's sort of like those, you know, I, when my kids were young, I used to love those, those magic, magical coloring books. They weren't really coloring books. They were books with all of these dots on it thousands and thousands of tiny dots. And if you look at the dots with just the right attitude, right? 
frame of mind and really quiet got out of the way that you know a duck would emerge or a donkey or a, a lighthouse or a mountain but otherwise it just looked like a bunch of dots and i i don't remember what those great books were called we had so much fun with them when my kids were small there's there's advanced versions and less advanced versions you know like puzzles so meditation's a little like that the are the pure light of consciousness and awareness is within us already fully developed so we're not developing anything through meditation all we're doing is making ourselves vulnerable uh, for the awakening, awareness to arise within us. So we're kind of like making ourselves prey to meditation, you know, a victim of meditation. And so that's the correct attitude. You know, you're surrendering and say, hey, I really don't know anything. Please, you know. I'm a good boy scout, you know, or girl scout, you know. So you just try and be still. Be still, completely still, and don't strive for anything. Don't think that you can get rid of anything to make the light shine. It's not like that. Just be yourself in yourself, totally content with yourself. And just, you know, you can use a mantra or you know, mindfulness of breath, visualization of a mandala, tantric deities, whatever you want to use as a support, because that's all they are. These are just supporting things. You know, they're just helping you. They're little helpers, like a, a baby has a teether or a pacifier. So we use these mantras sort of like a pacifier to calm ourselves down and get out of our own way. So that's what it's all about. So not making meditation part of the problem is about, you know, not jumping into it right away, you know, not just looking for something to do in addition to what, make it another thing where you have a name for it and a time for it, like you do for school and other things. You have a name for it, you have a time for it, but it's a little different than that. The other things you have a name and a time for, you know, you're, you're going there, you're sacrificing this and you're getting that. But with meditation, yes, you have a time, you have the name meditation, but you don't do it. You know, you just allow it. So meditation is really the art of allowing, allowing awareness to arise. So I love this talk that I heard by his name is Stephen. He gave it a couple of weeks ago. And uh, uh, it was wonderful. And his one line really caught me, you know, not to make meditation part of the problem. And so that's what, that's all I have to say. I wanted to share this, this wonderful experience that I had with you.